You're 63 years old and you're retired with $2 million in your 401k. And you're asking yourself the question, should I put money into a Roth account from this 401k that I've accumulated? That's what we're gonna look at today. Thanks for joining us. My name is John Vandergriff. I'm one of the owners and wealth planning team lead here at Blue Ridge Wealth Planners, where we help people make the transition from their working years to retirement with planning, or if they're already in retirement, making sure that planning reflects the things they want to do so that they can enjoy that retirement better. And one of those conversations that we have on a daily basis is in the realm of taxes with tax planning. And so we're going to go into that today uh, with this particular situation, but as always, we point out a couple things when we get started. First, uh, we're going to cover some specific details here. Before you make any decisions off of the information here, make sure you consult a tax professional or a tax planner or both. Uh, in some cases, you know, we work hand in hand with our clients, uh, tax professionals, to make sure that we have all the information available before we make some decisions here. Uh, the other is, if you enjoy this content, make sure that you like, uh, share, and subscribe, and, and comment with any questions or, or observations that you have. We'd love to get that feedback from you. And uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into today's situation. So we've got a 63 year old who is retired. They have accumulated a pretty large sum in their 401ks, $2 million. And so we're gonna look at the details of this situation to see if now is a good time for them to start converting this money from the 401k or tax deferred position into a Roth position where it can now, from this point forward, grow tax free. Uh, and so as we look at this, Obviously, there are a lot of things that need to be considered when we go into a retirement planning conversation. Uh, and so as we look, income, investments, taxes, healthcare, family legacy, make up what we call a plan for everything for retirement. Uh, we're gonna be focusing primarily on the income needs uh, today and in the future of this couple, but also the tax ramifications. And what you're gonna see is there's a lot of overlap in these areas, which is why it's important to make sure that you're getting uh, the right level of planning. And so. Again, as we start to add a little bit more meat onto the bone here for this situation, we've got a married couple, age 63 and 64, uh, $72,000 or $6,000 a month is their income need. And lucky for them, between the pension income and their combined social securities, they have more than their income need provided on an annual basis. And these are sources that are not going away anytime soon. So as we look at this, this makes it to where they really don't need any of the money that's inside of this 401k or even uh, the banks other than maybe emergency pools. But if you're gonna pick one of these two, it would be much better to take from this guy than this one. So as we look at our situation here, we've got a 401k uh, that has um, a substantial amount of money in it, but not a lot of need today. And what we do know about these tax deferred accounts, even if you don't need them, by the time you reach the age of 72, or for this couple in eight and nine years, uh, they're gonna be forced to take money out of these 401ks whether they want to or not. Even though their income needs are supplied, they may have to pull larger than needed withdrawals, and we're gonna look at that in a particular uh, situation. So as we look at Roth conversions, we need to, you know, obviously evaluate for this situation if that's a good decision or not. But Roth conversions, we need to know moving money out of a Roth, an IRA or a 401k is a taxable event. So whatever dollars come out are going to be taxable in that tax year and they're going to go on top of any other income. So in this situation, it's going to go on top of their Social Security and their pension income uh, and they'll be taxed at the top tax rate for this conversion. Now, Roth IRAs need to be in place for five years before uh, the contributions and the growth are tax-free. But in this case, since we are over the age of 59 and a half, when you make this conversion, your principal will be available to you um, during the five-year period, but the growth on that money would be taxable. So if you give you an example, if you converted $100,000 after taxes have been taken out, and it grows to 105 during that five year period, you could take up to 100 with no taxes. If you got into that extra 5,000, anything over your original amount would be taxable to you. And then after the five years, obviously it would be tax free. All right, so as we look at this situation and start to fill in our chart here, uh, we've got the annual income need of $6,000 a month or $72,000. More than that provided between pension and social security. So $76,800 is their current income, which would put their top tax rate today at 12%. So as we look at this, 
two million dollars of pre-tax money, five hundred thousand dollars of after-tax money, and then zero dollars in tax-free accounts like a Roth IRA or properly structured life insurance. So what we're trying to do is take this very top-heavy picture and start to migrate those monies down to where they're in a much more tax-favorable position uh, as these uh, people move forward. So as we talk about this, it's important to point out um, what we have to look at when it comes to a Roth conversion example. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, what's involved if the money stays in the 401k versus if it gets moved into a Roth IRA uh, position. So for this case, we want to use an example of $100,000 just for good, easy math, looking at if it stays versus if it gets converted over. And so as we look at this scenario, obviously if the money stays in the 401k, there are no taxes owed today because this is a tax deferred option. So $100,000 continues to be the balance of the account. If we move these monies into a Roth position, uh, that money is going to be taxable. And for this example to not be unfair, uh, we've got to consider that the taxes on this money are paid by the money itself. And so if 20% was the tax buy on these dollars, then that means the net amount going into the Roth account would be 80,000. So as we look at this, some financial advisors will stop here and they'll say, doing a Roth conversion is a bad idea because you have less money. You know, $100,000 if you do nothing, $80,000, and if the market grows, this account will grow slower than this one. And on the short term, that is true. If both of these accounts make 10%, this account makes eight, this account makes 10, but we're not looking at the same types of buckets. This one is fully taxable. This one from this point forward is growing tax-free. So as we look at these positions here, uh, let's assume that they're invested the same way over the same period of time. That way we take care of time value money, uh, inflation, all these things so that this is truly a, an example that looks at the taxes. Uh, so what we will find is the Roth conversion is now worth 160. The IRA 401k account is 200. And then we're assuming at this point that we pull money out. Well, the Roth, we know what we have because there are no taxes owed. So you've got $160,000 at your disposal. The 401k, it depends. It depends on what the tax brackets or the tax environment looks like when you take your distribution. Now, the interesting thing about this example is if those tax brackets are the same at the end as they are at the beginning, what you will notice here is that your bottom line is exactly the same in both scenarios. So it actually does not matter which decision you make if your tax brackets stay the same. Now, when we look at the way that most people give advice in retirement in regards to the way taxes work, they'll say, oh, well, your income will go down uh, in your retirement years from where it was when you were working. And if that's the case, then you will actually have a lower uh, tax bill. And so if you have lower tax bill, lower percentage, in this case, it makes more sense for you to leave this in the 401k, even if uh, you're growing money tax-free in the Roth account because it all matters when can you pay the lowest percentage tax. I do think this is unlikely because of our current situation, both with the overspending that's happening in Washington, as well as the large amount of debt that we have in our ledger, over $30 trillion. Um, both of those factors, I believe, are going to cause taxes to go up. We don't know exactly when, but we do know that that's a very high uh, likelihood scenario. So if that is the case, and even though your income goes down in retirement or stays the same, you could see a higher uh, percentage tax that gets assessed on these monies because this is income taxable money and this will go on top of any other income that you have. And so if that were the case, you would actually have less money uh, by leaving it alone, waiting until retirement instead of taking action and paying taxes on these accounts today. So this is why this is important because we don't know when the taxes are going to change. We also don't know what those brackets are going to look like, but we do know that the longer we leave these monies in these tax deferred accounts, they're going to continue to grow, and so will the tax obligation that we have on those dollars. And so, again, we've got to look at where the tax brackets are first to see if the tax brackets are what we need to assess 
but also we need to look at the impacts of leaving tax deferred dollars alone and what that could do later when forced to withdraw them. So, so in 2023, this shows for a married couple what the tax brackets look like. Um, and so for them, their top dollar would be at and so for them, their top dollar would be at 12% uh, with $76,000 of taxable income. Uh, so 117,000. If we look at a very similar situation, uh, 2017, the reason we point this out is if the rules stay in effect um, that are in place now, our current tax code is set to expire after the tax year 2025. So 2017's brackets would basically become 2026 brackets. Uh, and this is assessed for inflationary increases, but the brackets um, for this couple would put their top dollar at 15% instead of 12, which is higher. Now, the next one I look at is looking at a period of time where really we have a much higher uh, tax obligation, especially the higher your income went. If you notice today, uh, your top tax bracket, no matter how much income you have is 37% whether you were single or married, here, top tax bracket was 70%. So noticeably higher, almost double. Uh, but for this particular couple, with the income that they show today, they would actually reach the 28% for any dollars taken out of their 401k, um, which is pretty noticeable. Now, if we look at this scenario, which is very common if people have their income needs taken care of, Typically, they will leave the tax uh, deferred money alone because they don't need it. They don't need to generate taxes uh, for their lifestyle. And so, if that were to happen, we've got to look at the impact of what RMDs will do to you later. Because when we look at this particular situation, as we said, this couple has $2 million in 401ks and not a need from it because not only do they have after-tax money uh, to be able to get to in case of emergencies, but this uh, is not necessary for their lifestyle because their pension and Social Security income makes up everything they need on a monthly basis. So if we just look at this $2 million account and we say very simply, if this were able to have a 5% return average per year for the next nine years, this $2 million would turn into $3.1 million dollars and the reason we say nine years is you have to start pulling out money from this account at the age of 72. And if you did, taking the RMD at that age would result in an additional $113,000 of income, which would go on top of the $76,000 of income they have today, putting them in an income total of $190,000 which is noticeably different than uh, the 76,000 they have today and much higher income, which you would conclude would bring about much higher taxes. So what we wanna look at uh, here is obviously where is their uh, income today in those brackets? And so we're gonna look at this kind of uh, pre-RMDs because if we're making decisions today, obviously we don't have $3.1 million, we've got $2 million in those accounts. Anything that we would pull out would start at a 12% distribution percentage today, a 15% versus a 28. So obviously if this plays out in the scenario, today is the lowest tax environment we have. Well, even if we factor in the RMD money in today's brackets saying, okay, well, we know we're going to have to take out, let's say conservatively, an extra $100,000. What would that do to us from a tax bracket perspective as far as our top tax dollar that we look at? So that would jump this particular couple from the 12% bracket in today's tax code to the 22%, so an increase, almost double. It would bring them from the 15% bracket to the 28 if we look at 2017 or what would be things in 2026. And then based on the way things were in 1981, which was a much higher tax environment, uh, you would have almost 50% of the distributions at your top dollar uh, paid out in taxes, which is not what you want. So. The signs here point to an opportunity to pay less taxes today, especially since we know there is no way to avoid the RMDs other than giving that money away. And again, unless they're wanting to give $2 million to charity, it could make sense to start moving these monies now. So the question becomes, how much would be wise to convert? Well, again, based on this situation, I look at this and say uh, anything that we can get converted underneath the 25% tax bracket, I think is a good opportunity. Um, as we looked at, obviously they have 
a situation where they could get into the 28 or higher tax bracket depending on uh, what things look like when they have their RMDs. But if we're trying to stay under 25%, obviously that gives us the ability to get the rest of the 12% bracket taken care of, max out the 22% bracket and the 24% bracket, and that would put them at almost 320,000 of the $2 million being able to be converted at an effective tax rate of 21.7%, which is exceptionally low. And for this particular couple, I don't know that they'll ever get to see that low an effective tax rate on the money that is forced uh, to come out of their IRAs or 401ks in the future. So, so we know that that's a good opportunity, but there's one more thing that we have to consider because when we are in the position now of this uh, youngest person being at age 63, uh, Medicare does a two year look back on your income to determine what your Medicare premiums are. Um, and so as we look at this, uh, the baseline cost for that in 2023 is for a couple, uh, a little less than $4,000 a year, but as your income goes above $194,000, you start to pay uh, additional Medicare Part B premiums depending on how high that income gets. Well, what we're looking at for a total income would exceed $366,000, which means if we're doing a true cost analysis of this conversion, we would need to add $8,700 of cost uh, to this conversion. That means that's the real cost of conversion in this particular situation. So, so whatever taxes get generated based on the conversions that we did, we would need to factor this in to the decision making process. And if we did, what that does is it brings your, uh, in this case, uh, total cost of conversion to a 20, 24.3% um, which again is lower than that goal of 25%. So still, even though this is adding additional cost to Medicare two years from now, I still think this could be a very good move for this couple based on uh, where they are, but also where RMDs will put them as they progress through their retirement. So as we look at this, obviously we went into some detail here in this conversation. If no one has gone into at least this much of a conversation with you about tax planning, I think you're missing an opportunity uh, to hopefully make some good decisions based on your situation. And so uh, you're going to see a link pop up below here. What I would ask you to do is click that link, schedule a time with us here at Blue Ridge Wealth Planners and see how we can walk you through this discussion. Because again, when we look at the risks today, obviously there's market risk, but one of the unknown and often unplanned for risk is what happens when taxes go up in the future because of this large amount of overspending and debt and what impact will that have on the savings that you have today. We want to know that before time so that we can make some good decisions uh, just like this to hopefully get money moved from a tax deferred position to a tax free position uh, and then that way you've got tax diversification just like investment diversification. So. Thank you for joining us in this conversation today. We hope you learned a lot. Like we said, comment with any questions or observations that you have and make sure that you share this with someone else. Uh, but thank you for this conversation and joining us. And we look forward to sharing more information with you in the future.